Ilari is amongst the most aggressive supports in the game, so utilizing my top 500 knowledge in ranked and scrims, let's discuss how you will dominate with her in ranked. Ilari's strengths lie within her burst healing and damage, as it is amongst the most consistent of all of these supports. Because of this, she needs time to find opportunities in general or to take off angles. She does, however, run into problems with damage fall off somewhat frequently, so she will want to stay a little bit closer than some snipers. Because of this, she has been played consistently with characters like Arisa. Sebastian and Baptiste. In these compositions, Baptiste can provide consistent AoE healing options for the team to give the Alari options to seek different off angles and rotate back to the team when players need lots of healing within a short window of time, like against an enemy Bastion in turret form. I could also see the character developing within other compositions, but we will cover that in other portions in the video with her specific abilities. Right now, understand that she doesn't want to rush in all of the time and is okay with taking her time to find aggressive damaging opportunities. Alari's weapon is incredibly strong, dealing 75 damage to the body while fully charged. She starts running into fall off at 30 meters away, so keep that in mind when you are learning her spacing comparatively to other characters. A lot of players are going to get into the habit of trying to fully charge every single shot they take. Instead, you should look to combo shots together. A headshot followed up with a quick body shot may be enough to finish off a low target. On the screen is a list of all the different combos for one-shotting targets on Alari that are useful to know. None of these are something I am consistently thinking about, but nice to know to pull out in specific situations. Shout out to Magikarp for this one. The the healing portion of her rifle should be used when characters need a lot of healing in one quick burst. This is because it does a whopping 120 healing per second, but it doesn't last forever. You'll want to make sure that you always leave a bit of the charge left over, however, because if it completely depletes, it actually takes longer to recharge. By controlling this overheat mechanic, you can make sure that you have a little bit of healing left over at all times for some clutch moments. Next up, Alari has a lot of options with her movement ability, Outburst. On a 7 second cooldown, it can be used to traverse to various high grounds, but also can be used to get away by just tapping on the ability. For example, you should save this ability when an enemy Arisa or Bastion has their ultimates, as you can use the ability to escape from the situations they can put you within. It is very handy considering these characters are really strong right now. Against characters like Winston, this can be used once he jumps onto you so you can push him off of your high ground or create distance to buy time. While the jump doesn't push you incredibly high, you can use it in combination with the payload or the environment to get to different places. On King's Row, the payload constantly gives you opportunities to take advantage of different positions to find weak targets in the backline to take out quickly with your rifle. This is key to the character, so make sure you keep this all in mind. It should also always be used before you use your ultimate, as it will let you swing faster, giving the enemy less time to react and counter you before you shoot. It also helps you do some funny flanks on King's Row below the map, which I have personally used in scrims a few times already. Enough talk about Outburst though, it is time to talk about her most nuanced ability, the Healing Pylon. There is a lot that goes into this ability, so buckle up. Against Alari, the first step to winning is taking out her turret so it is important that you keep it up as long as possible. Understand that if the enemy damages your turret, it goes on a 12 second cooldown as opposed to an 8 second cooldown, even if you choose to destroy the turret before they fully destroy it. So when playing with the current Arisa composition on defense, you'll want to tell your team to start by playing a bit forward and then slowly rotate your turret back as the enemy takes more space so that it avoids the enemy's damage and you can enable your team to poke for longer, generating your ultimate all the while. Furthermore, it is important you understand how perspective works in Overwatch, as the turret is incredibly tall. While a turret may look safe from your angle, try to visualize what the other team will see from the angle they are pushing from. That turret was completely covered by two walls, and it looks pretty safe from our angle, but we have to understand that the turret is very long. So look, if I was like a Cassie or a soldier, this is very easy to shoot down. So what you have to understand is even though this looks like it's covered by two walls, sometimes it's better to put it on a farther edge that looks like it's jutting out more to that angle because you know you have information that the team is coming this way. Because look how much harder it is for a hit scan to shoot this here. They have to they have to swing pretty hard in order to shoot that turret. So obviously this wouldn't be very good if a team was gonna come from this angle. That's so far out in the open. But it's not great to put it in the middle because you can just put it over here, it gets even more cover. You're always gonna have this info no matter what map you're on, so you might as well use it to your advantage and think about what your enemies can see so you have the most effective healing pylons. The last tip regarding pylon involves playing for yourself. In ladder, sometimes your team won't take space effectively, or you will be playing dive compositions where you will need to take an angle yourself and make a play. In these situations, it is okay to look to put your pylon in a place that you can take your angle and then rotate back to the fight, or give yourself a little extra time to find a pick and sway that fight. I usually would not use the turret in this 
this way, but it is an option due to the reality of Rank being a shit show sometimes. No Elari guide is complete though without talking about her ultimate, Captive Sun. This ability is incredibly powerful, just remember that this ultimate gets blocked by shields now. The ultimate slows down enemies by 40% in a radius giving them a sunstruck debuff that explodes after dealing 90 damage. Triggering one detonation will trigger others that are directly nearby, so you will commonly want to use this ultimate early in the fight when teams are rotating to achieve the maximum value on the character. Understand that you are not invincible in the ultimate either though. You don't move as fast as Mercy and Valk, so don't fly to the skybox. Balance the proposition of finding an aggressive angle with keeping yourself alive as well. Not to mention, if you get stunned or hacked, your ultimate will be immediately cancelled. The biggest tip I can give a new Alari player is that you should use this ultimate frequently, similar to Baptiste's window, as it only costs 2420 points to generate, and when you take into account just how much healing and damage you can do on this character, she can easily get an ultimate every two fights. It is okay to target a person that is out in the open if it means you can guarantee a pick, but understand if you can hit a team in rotation, that is preferred, just don't get it Suzu'd please. So if you were going to take anything away from this video, understand that Ilari is an aggressive support that is currently being played within slower compositions that allow her time to take angles and find opportunities. If you want to climb as Ilari, you have to be confident in your damage capabilities, but you also have to juggle your turret around before enemies can deal damage to it so that you will always have it up and avoid that 12 second cooldown. Understand what they can see from their perspective and go from there. Use your ultimate when the enemies are in rotation or to isolate a pick and you are ready to start carrying games. I usually do unranked to GMs on characters right after I release these kind of guides on the channel, but with school I might need to wait a little bit before I start that. So make sure you join the Discord and turn on notifications when I go live if you are interested. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching, but until next time, I've got a peace out and pass out. I'll see you in the next one.